He's Mr. Kirk Herbstreet and Pat McAfee. Yeah. Welcome. What's happening? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Herbstreet is here. Yeah. Now, he's, he's not the only one. I will say one of the baddest, most interesting humans to ever exist is also walking around. Chris Fowler. What? Right over oh. here. I don't know if they just got out of there. Yeah. Look at that. Right there. Holy hell, yeah. Chris Fowler's on the wow. show. Chris Fowler's on the show. I've never been asked, but I just crashed. What a I just, voice. That's my response to never being invited. Yeah, I'm voice. Iconic, that, what is he iconic voice. That man oh controls a conversation like you wouldn't believe. Hey, there, <laughs> this, uh, I will say this about Chris Fowler. If you're not following him on Instagram, you need to do that now. Yep. Okay. This past off season, Fowler showed me two lions doing it in the safari ah. on his Instagram story. I watched it. We pulled it. Then up? also, he'll get. I don't know if it's still up there. I was only twenty four hours. Someone's about to pull it up. Hey, was, out of so all the stuff you got out of that two lions mating, that was your big place for <laughs> mating. Beautiful scenery all around the world. Two lions doing it was what got your. Attention. It was a heck of an off season. I, I I lived through Chris Fowler this off season. And it was hard not to just remember that. Big Ben, uh, Herbie's dog, has Ooh. made his way all the way out to Seattle. Oh. Benny oh, 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 wow. Yeah. Good boy. Look at that dog. Oh, 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 from Kansas City to Seattle. Whole week. I did not. This is the first time I'm seeing Ben on premise here for game day. Does he travel a lot? It, it brought him the whole week. Uh, flew Wednesday to Kansas City and then flew late last night to uh, Seattle. Let's talk First about time the, he's been here. Well, it's great to see him. He's a beautiful yeah, dog. He's he good is, American. He is, act, he is good American. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In Seattle. <laughs> shout that's out. what I'm saying. Yeah, shout out. Hey, uh, let's dive in here. You were at that game last night. Yeah. We talked about it earlier uh, about how Travis and Patrick are kind of like cheating at football cheating. at this point. Now, second half, they obviously got kind of slowed down or whatever. But at the beginning of that, Travis is doing hook and ladders on like the first pass that play. Was sick. sick. Lefty pitch. Is that planned, do you think? Or they just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, planned. Oh, yeah, planned. And it's just, you know, it's him being him, them trusting him. You and I were talking uh, before we hopped on here together. But when you have trust with a quarterback and trust with one of his go-to guys, you just – they actually call him Travis Routes. When they get into the red zone, they get to third down, critical moments in the game. I don't know if they call it in the huddle Travis routes, but just talking with Matt Nagy and some of their coaches, they they basically ask him to just kind of find space. I don't know if we've ever seen a tight end. There have been great tight ends who has a feel for coverage and understanding a high football IQ to understand what the other receivers are doing and how the defense is going to react based on the coverage they're in and, and preemptively understands where he needs to go to kind of get leverage and then sink. It, it's It's so much, and he does it, so almost like nonchalant and uh, almost like he's in a practice when he does it. So it's incredible. And then the, for Pat to trust yes. him and know where he is, it's a thing of beauty. We talked about like Patrick Mahomes quarterbacks normally have to know what everybody's doing. Patrick 100%. Mahomes definitely has to know what everybody's doing. Travis does as well. And they make it look so easy to your point about the football IQ. I don't think Travis gets nearly enough no, credit he for doing what he's doing. They just like, oh, well, Patrick will find him. Patrick will find him. It's like, no, Patrick there's so just, much yeah. that goes into that. And and like you say, for people that a normal, like we're at a practice right now with Washington, they're going over plays. The quarterback, Michael Penix, understands, okay, this guy's going to run this route. AJ is a defender. He understands, okay, I've been studying this film all week. They, they're going to do this when they get into this formation or this personnel grouping. This receiver, one goes here, two's going to go there. With Kansas City, you can't do that. Because with 87, we were talking about it, you know he's going to get the ball, and you still can't stop him. How many times do you watch the Chiefs? And you're Let like, you can someone take 87? You know, Lunch take him all and and they just it's it's like AJ and Ryan when they were in middle school playing football together <laughs> against the local kids in the neighborhood. <laughs> and 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 Ryan just knew where AJ was gonna go because they played so much together, they had such chemistry. That's what it really looks like. They're playing backyard football at a, just a very, very different level of sophistication. Before AJ has a question for you and the boys, obviously, we're very excited. Herbie made some time for us. Ain't that right, boys? Thank, Thank you, Herbie. Herbie. Thank you, Herbie. Thank you, Herbie. Good guy. Here's an Here's an interesting stat from Hembo, stats guy at ESPN, obviously legend. Drew Brees started 229 games with Sean Payton as head coach and offense coordinator. Never once did he have a QBR as low as Russell Wilson did last night. Russell Wilson's QBR last night was 10.1. Obviously, we saw the turnovers. We know the slow start to the season. What are you hearing in your conversations with Sean Payton, with Russell Wilson, that's either optimistic about what they can become, or are they all kind of wondering why the hell this hasn't worked the way they thought it was going to work as well? 
Well, I think if you looked at it going into the game last night, his numbers weren't awful. Yeah. It, they're, they're, you know, the, the, other than the Miami game, everybody's thinking about the Miami game, that the Denver's a debacle. They, they had the lead in three of the other four losses going into the last night at halftime. And they, and he's played well compared to what he did last, last year. The difference is, and this is just my opinion sitting here wherever we are, October. By the time we get into December, We're in Seattle, Herbie. Jeez. <laughs> by the time we Come get into on. December and into this January, on drugs. Yeah, the, what's this guy's guy's up deal? I don't even know what city. He's all doped up. He's all doped up. He's all doped up. He looks he looks, he looks he's so good though in the sun. He looks so good, and he's got that guy Barry bracelet on. It's hot. Bracelet is How have you sat up here? For Bro. this long. Well, I had this on. I had to take that off. And then Coach DeBoer gifted me this. This is hot. Hot. I did not really? expect this. I thought it was going to be hell. I thought it was going to be, <laughs> as soon as I walk off the plane, I thought there was going to be wazoo people telling me, welcome to hell. I thought it was going to be rainy. I thought it was going to be breezy. I thought it was going to be cold. No, it's Complete nice. ops. It's Hospitable. Nice. Gifts. Yeah. Weather. I was right. telling you that. I told you you were going to love the people here. But not I all cut you off there. Not all of no, I said so, you were doped up. Yeah, no, that's not true. But but <laughs> well, what is true is that you guys on. are going to talk about Jeez. Kansas City. There's two areas that they're different this year than they've been, even last year when they won the Super Bowl. AJ, I love it. Their defense is legit. Their defense is one of the best defenses, in my opinion, in the NFL. A lot of these guys in their second year with Spags, they understand where to go. And AJ will tell you, when you're not thinking about things and you're just playing and allowing your instincts to take over, you play at such a different level. I think you're going to see that all year from this. It's more than, wow, Chris Jones is really good. There's so much more to their defense than just Chris Jones, who's a phenomenal player. The back end's different. They can man you. They press you. Old school, bully you, beat you up. Look what they did to Jefferson at Minnesota before he went out with a hammy with Sneed. So they're legit on defense. That's why I'm taking away more of what Spags and Kansas City has on defense than I am Russell sucks, Got Denver's it. terrible. I, I I really think Kansas City's at a different level on that side of the ball. Good, AJ. Kirk, when you mentioned Chris Jones, so you talked about him last night in the show or during the game when he was lined up on the edge and got a sack. He's like, okay, he gets to stand and, and choose kind of where he rushes. And yep. you talked about that where Spags is okay with him, says, I don't even know where he's going to line up. He kind of picks the matchup he wants. First off, he gets up there. He chops the arms, turns, runs the corner. He's he's an interior D lineman. He shouldn't be able to rush like that. You shouldn't be able to move that well yep. when you're that big. But how yep. can you talk about how rare that is? And like, there's not many people that kind of have that freedom. And then when they do have the freedom, boom, they capitalize on all the time. It, it, it kind of reminds me what we were just talking about with Kelsey having the freedom. It's, it, I think that Kansas City's figured out with the guy, there's certain guys that they know about and they trust and they just kind of let them be, be who they are. Chris Jones just has a rare skill set. I mean, first of all, as you know, to be 6'6 and playing in the interior, that's incredibly rare to have that length and playing inside with those guards, with the twitch that he has and the get off that he has. And he's really good against the run. But what I love is in third down, I even talked to Spags about it. He's like, listen, he's it's up to him. And this guy studies it. Like you hear veterans study stuff. He looks at their height. He looks at their weight. He looks at what year they are. He understands that, you know where they are, where their where their cheat code is, if their right legs up a little. I mean, he's looking at everything, and then he starts to kind of figure out based on film study and the way the game's going where he needs to go on third down. And he wanted to go against McGlinchey, and he got his one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he and he had su success against him when he was at San Fran, so he clearly dialed that up. But, yeah, the cool thing is, A.J., Mike Dana, the kid out of Michigan, mm -hmm. he kind of rolls with the punches. He doesn't mm -hmm. know where he's going to line up on third down. Am I in? Am I out? And how cool is that of him just to let 95 do what he's going to do and then just kind of react to that? Do you feel uh, now you're in your second year calling NFL games, and we're pumped that you're in the NFL. Mm -hmm. oh, we yeah. all love hearing your voice in the NFL, you feel a lot more comfortable with your NFL knowledge and talking than maybe like a year ago from right now? Yeah, I, I feel, I mean, I've always watched the NFL. I've always, you know, been a fan of it. But when you when you peel everything back and you watch film every week and then you get the, the, the luxury to me is talking to guys like Spags and Andy Reid and Mahomes on the field before the game for about 15 minutes. And you do that every week, you know, and, and no matter what team it is. And I'm just grateful to be in that position. And I'm like a sponge. I just... I study a lot of film, but then to to be able to get that confirmation with coaches and and players, that's been the part that's really blown me away is how welcoming and how accommodating that part. Not to talk to the coaches like they talk at a podium. Listen to this, AJ. This guy, okay, mm -hmm. whenever he, before he got to the NFL, he was like, I didn't play in the NFL. 
Nobody want to, and I was like, Kirk, everybody in the NFL watches game day you told, every I mean, single yeah. week. No, weekend. Kirk has everybody, that dumb, like, humble, he, he's humble, like, yeah, it in, is in dumb. Over the top, stupid way. Like, he should just own it. You should own who you are. Yeah, yeah. Kirk, Kirk, you should own agree. it. Come on, Kirk. We all agree completely. I underestimated how much the players grew up with game day. Yep. Like, that, that part everybody. I definitely underestimated. So it's been very cool to, almost reunite with a lot of these guys I haven't seen since they were stars in college. It'd be like if I saw AJ and I hadn't seen him since he was at Ohio State, all of a sudden I see him on the field. Oh, what's up? You know, it's it's been a lot of that. So, yeah, I think um, it, it and also with Al second year, I feel so comfortable with what he and I are doing. Uh, our producer, we have a new guy this year, a guy named T-Man, Mark, Mark Tottleman. He's been fantastic. Hey, shout he, out. So, yeah. Yeah. It's been I feel as comfortable as I could hope for. Yeah, well, you're sounding amazing. It's great to listen and great to watch. I went over to the shop last night and watched that. Did you guys watch any of that during the watch along? Yeah, yeah. With I little, little Will Ferrell. Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. How'd that go? Uh, I saw Will Ferrell know, in his full, was, full, full attire. You know, I couldn't hear anything, but it, it, I, I appreciated the concept. You know what yeah. I mean? Have you noticed, though, that some of these primetime games, like last night got a little boring. You're not allowed to say that. We'll say that from watching. West Virginia got real exciting at the time. What the game. There? Shut up, oh, Herbie. What? Herbie. Tough. Happened. I was, heartbreaker. Man, I was oh, getting, heartbreaker. Did you guys already review this? Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll but we talked about we'll it. I haven't Herbie. heard Kirk Herbstreit talk about What's it. What's your thoughts, though? Well, you're, I mean, you're the voice of college football. <laughs> I, I just, it's not like I hate West Virginia. Well, I just love, I love, like, I want the guy to make the field goal so bad. You know, I'm, I'm it's just like I'm, having fun cheering against you. Yes. So that's why, you know, the Colts in West Virginia, all of a sudden I, 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 you know, I have nothing against them, but I love to see them have some Yeah, struggles. for me to score them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should have yeah. seen me last night. Okay? I mean, how do you, how does all that, right, how does Herbie. Happen? Okay, we got six, seven tight end too. Not on the field for the Hail Mary. Jeez. How many people touched that ball? It's 10. Too many. I think 10 guys on, <laughs> I think 10 guys touched the ball before it was scored. We also got a 15 yard penalty that backed up the kickoff, which yeah, I know. is a whole nother that's conversation. A whole, that's a bigger conversation than the, the fluke that ended up costing you. How a lot about of Dana, big conversation. How about Dana beating his former yeah, team? Yeah, it's all been talked about, Herbie. Okay, have a new take. Okay, Dana Holgerson beat West Virginia. We get it. Oh, now we're looking at it. Look at this. Oh, yeah, check well, that this out. Is, yeah. You can look at it. You got to box those guys oh, here out. We go. Here we go. Yeah, got to box the doors. We have a six, seven. One, two, three, get in front of them. three four. Jeez. AJ Coach is up here. What's going on? I mean, this is <laughs> – there was a couple heartbreakers in the NFL. I remember that we had to watch during my time playing in the NFL, and you watch them, and you went – okay, so if you're on defense, you can't have anybody facing – you know the back of the end zone. They're waiting for that tip. You got to you got to box them out like yeah. it's basketball. You got to put a body yeah. in front of those yeah. guys. That's what I heard. It's not just That's to knock it down. Yeah, you got to get in, get a body on them. So if it gets knocked down, they, I mean they executed perfectly right there. You got to get. I give Houston a lot of credit. Really do. That's what you heard. Huh? That's what I. That's what I heard. Yeah, is that that's what, what I heard. Is that through your? It's easier said football? than done. By the way, yeah. much easier said than done. Yeah, much also, easier. Hey, take that into consideration. Much easier said than done. I've seen a thousand <laughs> of those hit the ground. Just want to let everybody know. Yeah. I've seen a thousand of those not get caught. Yeah. So whenever we say much easier, and you guys had a magical season going too. You did. It's Damn. still going. It's not over. It's, yeah, great comeback. I mean, I don't know it if you saw still... the. the <laughs> That's a great end. point. The tight end Connor, for Houston. Great point. His last name is yeah. Man Jack the Fourth. So I think anytime Whoa. you're throwing to someone with a name like that, there's a huge chance he catches. You're it. Yeah. You got a problem there. Yeah. I'm proud of you guys. You, you, you every week you. Out to prove everybody wrong. You came so close last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, the little engine that could, Pat. That's that. what he's talking about. A little talk, engine that could. Hey, let's talk about this game. Let's talk about this game happening here. I just talked to our ticket sales people over here. 72,000 people going to be in here. Well, this place Damn. is loud. I, I believe Oregon has like 15,000 coming, so you do some quick math. Boom, 57,000 people are going to be here for the Washington Huskies. We talked to DeBoer earlier. He's talking about how re-energized the alumni are from those glory days of what Washington was, and now the team's all the way back. They have great NIL. That's a lighter. That's weed. Uh, it's legal. It's weird. Well, you're just part of the team in Seattle. Yeah. That, it is stuff right here. Right? Just, yeah, yeah. That, that was gifted to me on my way in here. Yeah. Great hospitality. We appreciate up. everybody. Local, local folk. Local laws, local yeah. folk. Yeah. That's folk, dick good, not the other word. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this game? This is, a, well, for, this is a big test for both of them, I think. First of all, you got to appreciate these teams despise one another. Hell yeah. I mean, off the charts hate each other. You ask them about, well, you, you got Wazoo for Washington. You got Oregon State. No, 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 no. This one is personal. 
This one is is talked about all year. So that's great. And and then you throw in the fact that both these teams are undefeated. Is it the first time in, in the history of the rivalry? That they're both top 10. Both yeah. in the top 10. So usually one's making a run, the other one's down, or vice versa. This time, both need a win. Both have Heisman Trophy quarterbacks with Bo Nix at Oregon and Michael Penix at, at Washington. And uh, I want to see which de- – all this talk about – one scoring, what are they, 51 points? The other one scores 46 points a game. I want to see which defense can make some plays. You know, what, sometimes you get hyped up for a game like this and it's 13 to 10 at half, you know? So I think the defenses will play a lot better than I think people expect. DeBoer has only had success as a head football coach. I've appreciated – talking to him here he obviously gifted me a hoodie they've been very, that. he said that uh like the u double um not only very wealthy but also pretty powerful around here yeah i think he's set up for sustained success here as well Thank which I, right. I don't think a lot of people are kind of recognizing because normally coach does well at a school no offense washington but it's way out here mm-hmm. they way out here normally you have success it's like all right where's he going feels like him and washington have been a perfect fit with each other and washington's going to the big 10 you know, so what, why would you want to – right now, he won 10 last year. looks like he's headed to 10 wins. Who knows if they get into the postseason this year. Why would he go anywhere right now, what, especially with the alumni that you're talking about, the world that we live in with NIL? I was asking him, when Penix leaves, does this thing have staying power? Can you sustain this? He didn't blink. You know, he, he thinks this thing is just warming up. And I'm older, but if you go back to the late 80s and into the 90s, Washington was a perennial power. You know, like – you, you think a lawyer, Malloy, or mm. uh, they had uh, Mark Brunel, that I, era, Steve Entman. I, they, had, they had some great players. And they every year they were Pac-10 champs back in those days and a national title contender. So why can't they get that going again? I, I, I wouldn't, he'd be crazy to leave here. Give me something. Give me something. 